Jose Bautista may have gone through the most severe case of career whiplash in the history of baseball. Joey Bats, Blue Jays slugger, 344 career home runs, ALDS hero, founder of the Runet Odor fan club, one crazy roller coaster of a professional career. His first season in the major leagues was crazy, the middle of his career was crazy, and the end of his career was crazy. A player who broke his hand punching a garbage can, a player who had the biggest breakout season ever, a man who influenced Jeff Passan to write the following words for the entire internet to see. This man's career was one heck of an interesting one to say the least. Expectations for Jose when he was drafted by the Pirates in the 20th round in 2000 were low at best. Not all players drafted this late fail in their professional careers. You can sometimes find a Mark Burtley or even a John Smoltz, but more often than not, these kinds of prospects don't make it very far. I don't think you know just how bad he really was before he became the hitter you probably remember. And understanding this is half the battle when trying to appreciate his wild career. Bautista's first season in the majors was in 2004. Between his first major league appearance and 2008, he accumulated negative 2.9 wins above replacement. According to a 2018 article published by Zach Cram on TheRinger.com, there were only 27 players in modern history through age 27 that were this bad through at least 1,000 plate appearances. It's worth repeating that there were only 26 other qualifying players that performed as poorly as Jose Bautista at this point in their careers. And looking only a couple of years ahead, he'd become the 26th player to join the 50 home run club as a member of the Toronto Blue Jays. So how'd he get here? Like I said, the beginning of his career was pretty crazy. On December 1st, 2003, and on August 1st, 2004, Jose Bautista was on the Pittsburgh Pirates. In between these two dates, he was a member of four other organizations and played for three of them. You know that series on MLB Network called 30 Teams in 30 Days? Well, my sources tell me that that series was inspired by Jose's rookie season. December 15th, 2003. The Baltimore Orioles acquired Bautista by means of the Rule 5 draft. He made his major league debut with the team and played 16 games overall. In the arms of the angel. June 3rd, 2004. The Tampa Bay Rays claimed Bautista on waivers. In the arms of June 28th, 2004. The Kansas City Royals purchased his contract from Tampa. In the arms July 30th, 2004. The Royals traded him to the New York Mets for Justin Hubert. In the July 30th, 2004. The Mets immediately traded Bautista back to the Pittsburgh Pirates. Hey look, we're back. In 2004, Jose Bautista was on four more teams than he hit home runs that season. And he was only on four teams. His first full season in one time zone came in 2006 when he got the chance to play in 117 games as a utility man for the 67-95 and 95 Pirates Club. Power-wise, he was on pace for around 22 homers and 71 runs batted in, which isn't crazy, but there was some pop in that bat before he turned it around. The good news was that he was hitting more home runs than teams he played for that season, which was a big step up for him. After becoming the starting third baseman and putting up similar numbers in 2007, he was traded to the Toronto Blue Jays in late August of 2008 for a player to be named later, thus ending his Pirates career for the second time. Bautista's Blue Jays career lasted for almost a decade, and as you know, it defined his career as a professional ball player. He saw some more playing time in 2009 after injuries to Scott Rowland, Adam Lind, and Alex Rios, putting up similar numbers to his time with the Pirates. Even still, he earned the starting right fielder spot for Toronto heading into the 2010 season. You know SpongeBob SquarePants? Normal SpongeBob is kind of like pre-2010 Jose Bautista. And this SpongeBob is 2010 Jose Bautista, who would go on to lead the major leagues in home runs that season. So the most important question is how did he do that? How did a player who performed so poorly become one of baseball's most powerful hitters? Now the first thing that goes to everyone's mind is PEDs, given the sport was only a few years removed from the steroid era. And I know there are some who will always be suspicious regardless of any counter evidence to the claim, and Jose knew that too. PED testing began in Major League Baseball in 2003. I'm definitely not the world's qualifying authority on the subject of medical testing, but the league tests their players at least twice per year and I feel that if Jose had gone down that route, it would have already been found out. Getting the chance to play every day and hit third in an American League lineup are both positive reinforcements, but what's been given most of the credit for his transformation are simply some mechanical adjustments in his swing. When the Orioles took Bautista from Pittsburgh in the Rule 5 draft back in 2003, Baseball America's scouting report on Jose was, quote, his power potential is his best tool. So there was something there. 
and Bautista worked on that something with new Toronto hitting coach Dwayne Murphy. To show you exactly what kind of adjustments he made, we're going to take a look at an article from Tewksbury Hitting. Good hitting mechanics maximize the time hitters have to decide to swing. The more time a hitter has to choose whether or not to commit to swinging at a pitch, the better chance they have at hitting the ball without compromising their mechanics. Good hitting mechanics also adds bat speed without needing to move the hands forward. This extra bat speed can compensate if a hitter decides to swing too late. I'll show you what I mean. Here's old Jose and new Jose both taking a pitch. Both good looking dudes, but the mechanics of the former? Not so much. New Jose has already created bat speed without even committing to swinging at the pitch. Almost all of old Jose's bat speed was generated as he was deciding to swing, which is just too little too late. If New Bautista decided to swing at that last moment, he would have had a much greater chance at putting the ball in play because he already started to swing, while his younger self was just starting to follow through at the last second. Old Jose was getting blown away by mid-90s fastballs and was constantly out in front, meaning he had even less time to decide whether or not to swing. New Bautista was always swinging and could then decide at the end whether or not to stop, as opposed to having to go through the motions at the last second. These major adjustments disguising as minor ones put Jose on a brand new career path. It took him about a month into the season to kickstart his new career. In April, he hit 213 with a 314 on base percentage. Things were not clicking right away. But the next month, he went on to rake 12 homers while getting on base a ton. By the middle of May, he earned himself his first Major League accolade with Player of the Week honors, and even by the end of a bad June, he had already hit more home runs than he ever had in a season. A 24 home run first half earned him his first All-Star appearance as a reserve for the American League. Second half Bautista was even better, by almost every offensive metric. In 15 fewer games, he hit 6 more home runs and drove in 12 more runs. He really went out there and hit 30 home runs in the second half. The difference between his and the second highest post All-Star break home run total is the same as the difference between the second highest total and the 30th highest total. Second half Bautista led the major leagues in more than just home runs, and cruised through the rest of the season with ease. This is where Jose stood after the first season of his new career. He played in all but one game for the Blue Jays. One of the worst 27 players in major league history through age 27 had just put up a season worth fourth place in the AL MVP vote. Isolated power, ISO for short, is a metric that helps measure a hitter's power by only considering extra base hits, whereas the typical slugging percentage also considers singles. It's pretty much every Bautista fanboy's favorite stat. The difference between his 2010 ISO and runner-up Miguel Cabrera's is just about the same as the difference between Miguel Cabrera's and 20th place finisher Mike Napoli. That was good for the 17th highest single season ISO of all time, and a nice silver slugger award to go along with it. It was really all about power for Jose in 2010, and there are those who remember those 54 home runs and think that was Bautista's peak, but 2011 was calling, and it was not messing around. Jose didn't hit as many homers in 2011 as he did the year before, he didn't drive in as many runs, and his ISO wasn't nearly as high. But contrary to what 2020 baseball would tell you, hitting isn't just about homering. After signing a nice five-year contract extension, Bautista started off 2011 with maybe the best two months of his major league career, putting up the numbers in April and May that are on screen now. Had he kept up that pace the entire season, he would have accumulated the second highest single season war total in the history of major league baseball. There was no one better than Jose Bautista at this point. I'm going to speed run through some accolades and record moments from 2011 because it would take too long to talk about each one individually. He broke the Blue Jays' record for walks in a month in April held by former slugger Carlos Delgado while taking home Player of the Month honors. In 44 games, he became the fastest Blue Jay to ever hit 20 home runs in a season en route to another Player of the Month award in May. He became the first player in 77 years since Jimmy Fox to hit the most homers every month for five consecutive months. He received the most All-Star Game votes in the history of baseball and got the call to participate in that year's Home Run Derby. On September 7th, he was the first 40 home run hitter since 2004 to steal home. He walked more times in 2011 than any other American League hitter since Jason Giambi in 2000 and cleared the Jays franchise record by more than 9 walks for a season. Joey Votto has been the only player since to walk more times in a season. And yes, 24 of those were intentional walks. It looked like teams finally got the updated memos. He led the majors in home runs in back-to-back -back seasons for the first time since Mark McGuire in the late 90s. He took home his second consecutive Hank Aaron Award, his second consecutive Silver Slugger, and finished third in the AL MVP vote behind only Justin Verlander and Jacoby Ellsbury. And here was the final line for Jose Bautista in the best season of his Major League career. 
leading the bigs in a ton of offensive categories, and even increasing his batting average on balls in play by 76 points. Still not fantastic, but just a way to show you how much he improved on being a more complete hitter from his 54 home run showcase in 2010. There were also only four players that decade who had a higher on-base percentage in a season than 2011 Jose Bautista. He was 82% better than the average hitter by OPS+. Since 2004, there have only been nine other seasons by six other players posting a higher OPS+. Every single one of those seasons led to either an MVP award or a second place finish by Mike Trout. I didn't know it existed before making this video, but there's an edition of MLB The Show specifically for Canada, and Jose's breakout season earned him the honor of being the cover athlete for both the 2012 and 2013 games, which I think is more of an honor than any MVP award. One more stat for context, he was intentionally walked seven more times in 2011 than his 162 game average home run count from the beginning of his career through 2009. He'd go on to have some more good years for the Blue Jays, including all-star appearances in each of the next four seasons, along with two top 10 MVP finishes in 14 and 15, but 2011 was easily the peak of Jose Bautista's career. He had the chance to play for a couple of really good Toronto teams who made it to the championship series in back-to-back -back seasons. He played especially well in those 2015 playoffs, homering twice in both the division and championship series. It was also the year he hit that famous three-run homer that proved to be the deciding blow to end the series. That was one of the most memorable moments this century and the defining home run of his career. The bat flip wasn't too shabby either. He hit 40 home runs and drove in 114 runs that season, and it was really the last season we got to see this version of Jose Bautista. After getting hurt and not producing the way he once was, he was starting to regress. After the 2017 season, the Blue Jays declined his mutual option, and his days with the Toronto Blue Jays were done. Like I promised before though, there's still some crazy left at the end of his career too, both in his final season and afterwards. If you remember back to the first season of his career, he was hopping around from team to team like he was on some kind of cross-country tour. Well, he added three more to his resume during his final season in 2018. His career was kind of like a weird baseball burger. The first stop on his goodbye tour was Atlanta, Georgia. Alex Anthopoulos, the general manager of the Atlanta Braves, had served as assistant GM with the Blue Jays when they acquired Bautista and was promoted to general manager in October of 2009. He decided to give Bautista a shot with the Braves and signed him to a low-risk minor league deal in April of 2018. He was eventually released a little over a month later after going 5 for 35 in 12 games. Stop number two was a place all former superstars go to end their careers on low-risk deals. Flushing Queens. The Mets were in need of some offense when they signed him. So much so that they asked if he could rush down to New York from Tampa to be in the starting lineup that night against the Marlins. He got to City Field less than an hour before game time and wound up driving in the only run of the night for the Mets. Believe it or not, rushing a newly signed late 30s outfielder to the park and having him show up at the last second just to hit a big run scoring extra base hit is pretty common for the New York Mets. It actually happened just last season. Jose lasted 83 games, hit 204 with a weak 718 OPS, and was traded to the contending Phillies which gave him one last shot at a World Series title. Stop. I almost forgot something. We already established how Jose's first and last seasons mirrored each other given him being passed around like turkey on Thanksgiving in both. But if you remember from earlier, this isn't the first time the Mets have traded him. They traded him once before on July 30th, 2004. So not only was Jose traded by the Mets in his first and last big league seasons, but he was also on the same team twice, twice. And if you really want to get crazy, there were 5,824 days between the two days that the Mets traded Jose Bautista. If you take the difference between his career at bats and runs scored, and then take the difference between that number and 5,824, you get 113, which is exactly how many games Jose Bautista played in 2009, the year before his career changed forever. It wasn't very good for the Phillies either. The team didn't make the postseason and Jose was a free agent again by season's end. And those were his last games playing professional baseball since. Jose hasn't officially retired in the two years since, so there could still be more story to tell for him in the future. He's actually recently talked about returning to baseball as a two-way player. According to one of Jeff Passan's sources, he has his fastball up to 94 miles per hour with a good-looking slider to go along with it. His potential comeback as a two-way player is so interesting that I think it's the perfect place to leave off in our journey through his career. Jose Bautista started off as a low-level 20th round draft pick with little to no expectations, played for about 29 major league teams, and had one heck of a professional career. From maybe the greatest turnaround in the history of sports, to the big home runs, to the memorable moments, the career of one of Major League Baseball's most interesting sluggers is one that should be celebrated. If not one of the best Major League hitters ever, he was at the very least one of the best athletes in Canada, and one of the best players to ever put on a Blue Jays uniform. 
Regardless of what he does next in life, or in baseball, I think people are going to remember his career for a long time. 